everyone, my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. The Christmas season is in the air. Not when I'm filming this because it's the first week of November, but by the time you guys see this, it will be full on smack dab in the midst of Christmas time, which means that you guys are probably looking for gifts for your loved ones. And if you are on my channel, that probably means your kinky loved ones too. And I am not someone who likes to perpetuate the idea that you need things in order to do BDSM because you can do kink without any equipment whatsoever. But I also know that it can be really meaningful to a relationship to give a gift that demonstrates that you've thought about this person, that you understand them well, and that's going to be something they're going to be able to use for many years in the future. And that could be because you're shopping for your dom, or maybe you have a submissive best friend, or maybe you just want to impress everyone at the white elephant gift exchange at your local lunch. I don't know, whatever the reason is, I want to be able to help you all because I have a little bit of a reputation as someone who has an encyclopedic knowledge of where to get BDSM equipment. I have done so much window shopping. I have purchased from a lot of places. I have gone to a lot of places and I'm hoping I can distill that in today's video and hopefully put some of that knowledge to good use. Now, this is not going to be a video where I say overall this is like 10 suggestions for like things you can get a kinky person because there are so many different ways that someone can do BDSM. There are so many different interests that I think it's impossible to really give a blanket. This is something a BDSM person would like sort of idea. So what I'm going to be doing instead is actually breaking down these suggestions by category and you guys can kind of like pop around in the video just kind of based on what's relevant to you. So it's going to be more based on like here's a suggestion for this particular like category of interest or like type of person in BDSM versus like an overall here's a bunch of different gift ideas. So there's going to be a lot of information in this video. Hopefully some of it will give you some good ideas or suggestions on where to look for gifts or maybe you'll find the exact perfect thing. I don't know. Fingers crossed. I hope this is helpful, but let's go ahead and get into it. So my first suggestions would be for the newbie kinkster because not everybody who is in your life that's kinky have a lot of experience yet. Maybe they are still kind of exploring, figuring themselves out. They don't really have any equipment at all yet, or maybe they only have one or two pieces. But point being is that they are somebody who is newer to the community. And I think when they're still in that phase, when they're figuring themselves out, when they're figuring out their interests, what you need to do is kind of narrow down like the category of like what it is they might be into. So are they leaning more towards like bondage or pet play or ABDL and then you can use that kind of narrowing to help guide you into later gift ideas. From there my first suggestion would actually be to look at books. If they are still learning about themselves one of the best tools you can give them is books. Reading about the community, reading about different types of play, really helping them with their knowledge so they are more fully prepared when they do start to involve themselves more. Now there are lots of different books out there. I actually have a whole link that's going to be down in the description box of like all of my different book suggestions. It's from my FAQ because I get asked about books all the time because there's literally dozens of different books that you might want to choose from. They're kind of broken down by interest category. So again, having that narrowing down of kind of where they might be leaning towards would be good to kind of helping you pick out what sort of books would be the most helpful for them. Although there are a lot of like just general BDSM books out there as well. If they have done a little bit more of the education process and they're looking more for gear at this point so they can start getting into more different types of play, what I would look at is if you're in Canada, Church of Convention, and then if you're in the US, I would look at the stock room. And, and you can look at both kind of no matter where you're from, but shipping and everything else can be a lot easier, especially with, again, this holiday season. And the reason I like these two places is because they're relatively affordable, but it is for the most part quite high quality gear. It's going to be something that will last someone a while, but it's a lot of different things and they're kind of simpler, although they do have some things that are very like fetish specific on there as well. So it just it really covers a wide range and you can go for things like cuffs or a blindfold or a gag, sort of anything that's really simple 
multi-purpose, something that someone's going to get a lot of utility of and that won't necessarily break the bank for you. My second category would be the rope enthusiast. So this is somebody who is a rigger or a rope top. It could also be for a rope bottom, just people who like rope in general. And the number one place that I would say to go to is Twisted Monk. I love Twisted Monk. We have so many things from them, so I'm a little bit biased here. They are probably most well known for their hemp rope, but they have way more options besides that. So if there's somebody who has like a full suspension kit already, but maybe it's getting a little bit worn down, they have options for that. If there's somebody who is looking more for like tutorials and how to get into tying rope, there are DVDs and books, like literally every book that's worth having on how to do rope bondage is on the Twisted Monk website for sale basically. Maybe there's someone who has a little bit of rope, is still kind of playing around, but they want something like unique for their kit that they don't have that offers a different type of sensation or can be used with different types of play. Twisted Monk also has that as well. So it could be something like bamboo or silk. They also even have electroconductive rope. They also have little like smaller gifts. You're looking for something just as, like a little something to give someone. So they have like pins and badges and buttons, that sort of deal. And then they also have the Monk Sack as well, which is great for somebody who is really enthusiastic about rope but hasn't really taken the time to figure out a storage solution yet because it is purpose built for carrying and holding rope. So rather than having them carry around their rope and like an old pillowcase to the dungeon, you get them a little bit more something professional, something that's actually meant to carry all of that equipment. The third category would be the protocol top or the protocol bottom. I love shopping for people who are into protocol because I'm gonna say this to somebody who's into protocol myself, we can be a little bit extra. So whether it be a custom wax seal or like monogrammed hand towels, there are lots and lots of different things you can get for somebody who is into protocol. Do they have a lot of teas or formal dinners? Maybe you get them like a vintage serving set or like a vintage carafe for some water. If there's somebody who is more into giving service uh, than receiving it, they might be somebody that a boot blacking kit could be a good idea or a set of silver trays with silver polish or you could also go for a really nice pair of white gloves. If they're into sort of more of a, a butlering aspect of protocol and service. And those are great because it offers a way not only for them to to engage in their kink, but also potentially learn a new skill that they can also utilize in their play. Or maybe there's somebody who's into protocol, but it's not really so much a formal butlering type of protocol. Maybe it's a little bit more leather. So maybe they do a lot of like whiskey and cigar type parties, in which case I'd recommend getting them a bottle of a good whiskey that they can share at their next event, or maybe a box of cigars if they're into that as well. It really depends. There are lots of options when it comes to protocol. And again, honestly, like, feel free to get as extra as possible because all the people I know in my life who are into protocol, they love all of that really fancy stuff. And the fourth category would be the sadist and the masochist. Now, this is another category of kinksters that I think are relatively easy to shop for because if there's one thing that people sell online for BDSM gear, it is impact play equipment. If you wanna give somebody pain, oh, there are lots of options out there. If there's somebody who is more experienced and has kind of the standard, you know, floggers, canes, etc., already in their bag, I would recommend going to Scott Paul Designs. They have some very unique stuff that they're probably not already going to have in their play bag, but be warned, they are fairly expensive. So this isn't necessarily something that everyone is going to be able to afford. If you are on more of a budget or you have to buy a lot of gifts for many different people, I'd recommend going to Beatings on a Dime on Etsy. They're sort of a newer store that I've recently found and they specialize in affordable kink gear. And some of it is like really weird and some of it is interesting but it's all unique it's all affordable and you know that's sort of in the name of the shop and it's something where you're probably going to find something they don't already have as well and then finally if you are getting something that's a more personalized gift because you are in a relationship with this sadist or masochist i don't really think you can go wrong with something that is engraved or a kind of custom design there are two stories that i would go to for that one would be whipping wood and the other one is torn timber they are probably most well known for their paddles although they do make other designs and you can get something with a custom engraving in it or even sort of like a 2d or like semi 3d embossed design on the top of a wood paddle and it just it looks super cool and it's going to be one of a kind and very unique and i think that can be something that a lot of people feel really special about getting 
My fifth category would be Littles. Now, Littles, I think, are the most fun to shop for because they tend to have a lot of the Christmas spirit, like, still inside of them, and that's just, like, so sweet and so precious. And also, they are probably going to have a gift list that's, like, 10 miles long, so it probably also isn't that hard to shop for them. But when it comes to Littles, I really think about sort of, like, capturing the magic of Christmas in your gift kind of. I think there's lots of different things you could go for depending on sort of like if they're an age player too, like sort of what age range they like playing with. There's a little bit of nuance in here, but I would think about gifts that are something like, you know, maybe they want like a really decked out pacifier. Are they looking at a new onesie? If you're just looking for like smaller gifts, like stocking stuffers or something for like a white elephant gift exchange, you could look at things like hair bows or hair pretties or frilly socks or press on nails or like little like kids like makeup kits. Those can be really fun. If you want something that a little is going to be able to use for a long period of time, something a little bit more creative, I would look at some like classic toys that I remember from when I was a kid, like a shrinky dink maker or like an easy bake oven because those will provide like hours of fun. They can be really creative. They can be something that is very interactive and can be used in scenes as well. There's also lots of other options like a giant teddy bear or like a collection of finger paints or coloring books sort of depending on where their interests are and if they do tend a little bit more towards the younger side of the spectrum things like soft blankets or pacifier clips or board books can be really great gifts as well and if you are looking for your little specifically also make sure you're thinking about making that personalized something that really speaks to them like do they have a particular color that they like wearing in a little space do they have like a particular outfit outfit that they really loved you can try and like replicate that on like a bear from like build a bear workshop and give that to them could you maybe get something embroidered like an embroidered bib or something else like that that you know is really personalized to them and really kind of again captures that magic because littles are just so much fun to shop for and there's lots and lots of options out there as well all right number six very closely related to littles would be pets because maybe the person in your life is a little bit more animalistic Maybe they are a kitten or a puppy or maybe even a bird. Now, I think the obvious suggestion here would be to go to the pet store because if they like to play fetch or play with toys or anything like that, the pet store is probably going to have you covered. I really like thinking about like puzzle type toys, the things that kind of take a little bit of brain power because that can be really, that can be really great to build a scene around. It'd be something that really helps somebody stay in their animal headspace for maybe a little bit longer than just simply playing like tug or fetch wood and it uses more brain power as opposed to like just sheer energy to like run after a ball for like hours and hours at a time and I think as well something you could think about doing outside of just toys is like a little like pet gift basket so maybe you get them like a nice bowl and then inside of that you put like human friendly like pet treats so not actual like treats for bio animals but for things like you know dried fruit or nuts or cereal just something that kind of speaks to whatever pet they happen to be playing as and kind of just wrap it up as like a nice little gift basket that could also be really great again as like a gift exchange sort of gift as opposed to something maybe a little bit more personalized if you do want to take things more personalized if this is something that's more kind of within a ds relationship if this is like your pet you're shopping for again i really recommend personalization it's always a great option something like an engraved name tag or an embroidered handkerchief that has their name on it or their pet name on it i just think that can be like really powerful and really important to a lot of people because it's like literally saying hey like i literally this is for you this has your name on it and that can be so important to a lot of people the seventh category would be brats and brats deserve coal for Christmas. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just wanted to make a joke about coal. If you do have a brat in your life, chances are there's like overlap with other categories of BDSM, be that pet play or with littles or with sadism or masochism or even protocol maybe. I would maybe recommend, depending on sort of where their brattiness comes from, looking at like one of those other categories in order to get them a gift, but like otherwise they're brats, so get them coal. I'm, I'm serious, I'm saying that, I'm just kidding. If anything, if you get them coal, you should get them 
the joke coal, you know, it's like really chocolate, but it says lump of coal on it. I definitely got one of those when I was a kid and it was very funny. <laughs> All right, now the eighth category is daddies and mommies. Now, I actually think that this category can be a little bit difficult to shop for because it is sometimes hard to get something that speaks to their particular style of dominance or style of play, but that isn't like so personal that it's kind of like inserting yourself into like their play dynamic or into their role play style while still like being something that would be meaningful towards that. So I would probably look at, again, some of those other categories, like for example, if they're also a sadist, you know, maybe getting them an impact play toy would be an appropriate gift. I think it's a lot easier to shop for them if you happen to be that person's little and you're shopping for them, in which case I don't think there's anything else that a daddy or a mommy would want more than something personalized from their submissive. There are so many like really adorable, cute, like kids crafts for gifts for parents. So that could be like a macaroni and glitter covered picture frame that has like a picture of the two of you in it. Or maybe the little kid like make a batch of like homemade treats for their daddy or mommy and put it in a cute tin and have that be their gift for that year. You also can't get any more classic than like a tie for the daddy and jewelry for the mommy. Like that's like the most stereotypical Christmas gift ever, but it might kind of work for that particular dynamic. And if you're really not sure what to get them that would be appropriate for that relationship, I think that would really be a good time to recruit their little partner for gift shopping purposes. Now, be wary because Littles in Headspace might not be the best at keeping secrets, but uh, that would be the best way to make sure you're coordinating a gift that's going to be appropriate and respectful to that particular power exchange dynamic. And all this fails again, looking at the other suggestions from those other categories. Now, number nine would be the fetish clothing lover. Do you have somebody who is into kink in your life, but they also really love fashion like I do? There are so many options. The first thing that obviously comes to mind is latex. I don't think there's anything that is like more like high couture fashion, but also BDSM at the same time than latex. I recommend checking out Polymorph if you're in Canada. And if you are in Europe or the US, I would check out Libidex because they have a lot of really great, simple items that a lot of different people can use. I would look at gloves in particular because they don't have the sizing issues that like some more form-fitting latex garments would have. You can also look at pencil skirts because that's really only like, basically like one key measurement you really need to look for is like the waist size. And if you can figure that out, it's a lot easier compared to again, say like leggings or a long sleeve latex shirt. You can also look at like little accessories that are latex, like little hair pieces or cuff wraps or even like big like frilly necklaces I've seen like made out of latex. There are a lot of options if you just want like a piece and accessory for someone. And in particular, if you are on a budget and you want to get something simpler that is latex related, I would go to Libidex website, which is Latex Express. That is where you can get basically items right away that are super common, super simple. It doesn't have the same level of customization that you would get from the normal website, but if you're just getting sort of an introductory affordable latex item, the Latex Express website is like literally designed for that purpose. If there's somebody who isn't really into latex, but they like other types of fashion, I think Etsy is a great website. I have found a lot of shops through there. My three favorite ones currently would be Shop Mel Noir, which I think actually has their whole own website as of right now. Uh, Stockholm's Child, which I have talked about before in some of my live streams. They have a lot of cute stuff. And then I would also look at Buy a Patico, which is more of like, a harness and accessory sort of BDSM fashion place, but they have a lot of really unique colors and materials that they use for the harnesses. And I think it does look very fashion forward as opposed to strictly like for BDSM purposes, although it definitely has overlap and could also be used for that as well. And that brings me to number 10, which is the kinky sex worker. Because you might have somebody in your life who is kinky that also kind of extends it into their jobs. So they could be a cam girl, they could be a pro dom, they could sell pictures of their feet, they might be a sugar baby, and all of that is hard work. And they probably could 
could use a few things to help them relax and also to help keep them looking their best for their job. So I would think about pampering things like a really good body scrub or a high quality face mask or a foot soak. If they have somewhere that they like to go for pampering, maybe a gift card would be appropriate or if they go to a spa, oftentimes you can go to the spa and you can get like little like packages of things that they use there. So maybe they have like an in-house made sugar scrub or a body mud and you can get like little things like that to put in a gift basket for them. Or maybe what they could really use is some high quality lingerie or new shoes or a new purse. And maybe what they really need is like an equipment upgrade for their streams or for their private videos. There are lots of options. And finally, it's really important to just remember that all of these things are suggestions. They're just ideas. You know the person that you're shopping for the best and it's important to tailor what you're gonna be getting based on their own interests and the things that they already have. Me personally, I don't really feel ashamed at asking my friends what they want to have for Christmas because it's more important to me that they get something they're actually going to want and use versus like the value of a surprise. Now some people do really like surprises and so in that case I would maybe just ask for like general categories of things that they might be looking for like oh what are you hoping to get this year? Oh, I'm looking for a new perfume or a new sweater or I really want this one flogger. And depending on what those answers are, that's actually probably going to affect what you end up getting them and what you end up shopping for. And it should also probably go without saying that if you get somebody kinky, to give them a heads up first before they open it in front of their family. Like, you don't have to spoil the surprise, just let them know like, hey, you probably don't want to open that up in front of your mom and dad or your grandparents or whatever. Just open it up at home by yourself before you leave or maybe after you do all of your normal Christmas festivities with your family, just so you don't cause any accidental awkwardness or any sort of embarrassment for them because that would kind of defeat the purpose of giving them a nice gift, I think. Anyways, that was all of things I wanted to share in today's video. Hopefully you found this interesting and helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave that down in the comment section below. Links to some of the shops that I mentioned will be in the description box. If you like this video and you want to see more from me, please do subscribe. I make videos twice a week. And finally, if you want to support this channel, if you want to help me out, if you want to see more of my exclusive content like other videos and photo shoots and a Discord chat, that is all on Patreon. Link to that will also be down in the description box below. If you already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you guys next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.